नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू सेशन एट ऑफ अवर कोर्स ऑन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग गाइडलाइंस फॉर प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन वी आर करेंटली इन द सेकंड वीक ऑफ अवर डिस्कशन एंड एज यू आर वेल अवेयर अवर फोकस इन द वीक सेकंड इज ऑन इंजीनियरिंग मटेरियल्स बिकॉज ऑल ऑफ अस नो दैट फॉर एनी प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन टू बी सक्सेसफुल थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट और वेरी वेरी यू कैन से नेसेसरी first thing is that it we must be very very careful while designing the product so the first key keyword or the catch word is the design of the product now for design of the product there are number of guidelines there are number of steps that we have to follow we have to ensure that the design is robust the design is such that it satisfies the functional as well as the aesthetic requirements of the customer or the need for which the product is being designed so the first catch word is design the second catch word is the materials that are going to be used for making that product and a third important thing is the manufacturing process that is going to be used for manufacturing that product so these are the three important things again i will highlight and this we have already seen in our very first week of discussion that in a triangle identifying the quality of the product or defining the quality of any product three important edges of the triangle or three important sides of the triangle play a very important role and one side is the design the second one is as you are well aware is the materials and the third one are the manufacturing processes so the importance of materials cannot be sidelined or neglected from product design point of view so we have to keep in mind the product design or the importance of materials in product design so today we are trying to see that there are a large variety of materials that are available with us so we try to select the most optimal material that is going to satisfy our functional as well as the other service requirements for the product being designed now let us see that how we select a material so how we select a material that we will study in selection of materials 2 and in selection of materials 1 we will see that what are the parameters governing the selection process of engineering materials for different types of products so what can be the various guidelines that we will try to understand so the materials selection is an important part of a larger process of creating new solutions to problem so we try to find out new solutions to the problems and it is an important part materials selection is an important part in our problem solving approach or in our problem solving endeavor so the material selection is an important part of a larger process of creating new solutions to problems now we can take an example again of maybe furniture we are seeing for so many years the design of furniture is changing day by day why it is changing because new and new materials are being invented so when new materials are available with the designer he can experiment he can try to see he can uh, try to visualize his design in a different manner because now he or she feels that yes this extra or this additional material is available with me and if we can use this material for making our furniture design or making a sofa set or for making a chair or for making a table definitely new designs will come up why because now new material so the library of materials has increased or the family of materials may have new members so these new members may help the designers to think more creatively and coming up with shapes which were not initially possible with the available materials so that is the important point in the first sentence that is materials selection is an important part of a larger process of creating new solutions so new solutions will definitely involve creativity it will involve design thinking it will involve the step by step procedure for finding out the solution but we cannot ignore the importance of materials in this larger picture
picture in this larger picture materials will also play an important role in defining the final product or the design of the final product this larger process is called engineering design so when we talk of engineering design we cannot ignore the importance of engineering materials so it means that engineering design will also require knowledge of the engineering materials and therefore we are discussing this topic that why engineering materials are important and what are the factors governing the selection of the engineering materials so design of engineering components is limited by the available materials so this is very very important sentence if we are able to understand this sentence we will be able to emphasize we will be able to highlight the importance of materials in product design so you can just try to break this sentence into two broad categories this is a and this is b so if you look at a what is happening in a design of engineering components is limited by the available material so suppose we have a design of a product and we have to choose a material we have limited set of materials that is x and y so we have a design and we have a available set of material so this design is limited by the available set why because we can make this design with these two materials only and there is no additional modifications in the product design possible because we have available materials only but if we come to b new designs are made possible by new materials now suppose we want to change the shape of this product it was limited by the choice of materials that we have but now we say we have different types of materials which are available with us now we can experiment with this shape of our product or component why because now we have additional materials we have four additional materials which are available with us so they are definitely we can experiment with the shape of the product with the size of the product with the functionality of the product with the aesthetic of the product why because now we have large variety of materials that are available with us but the problem is now if we have a large variety how to choose or what is the criteria that we must follow to select a material out of these materials and i think this we have already discussed with the help of a chair in one of our previous sessions so these are the two we can say guide guidelines or guiding factors when we talk of materials uh, representation or importance of materials in context of product design so limited materials we have limitations in term of product design a wide variety of materials we have a choice to design our product according but then there is a problem that how to choose the best material for the product and for that we are trying to discuss today now material selection is important another important definition of engineering that is there on your screen this is uh, material selection in the design so the definition of engineering says now this is according to the accreditation board of engineering and technology in the usa so we can see this definition this is very very important definition engineering is the profession in which knowledge of the mathematical and natural sciences so in this profession we use the knowledge of the mathematical and natural sciences which is gained by how do we get this knowledge by study by experience and practice this is applied with judgment to develop ways to utilize economically the materials you can see the importance of materials here so what we do in engineering we try to apply our knowledge of mathematical and natural sciences now how we have gained this knowledge we have gained this knowledge by study by experience by practice and then we try to apply this knowledge to economically use the materials and forces of nature for the benefit of mankind so we try to develop tangible products which are going to affect the mankind or which are going to make the life of people easy 
life of people uh, may be happy. So, therefore, the materials are also an important aspect in any engineering design which cannot be ignored. So, we have to highlight the importance of engineering materials and it is also highlighted in the definition of engineering. Now, let us see the need of material selection already we have now I think amply addressed this point that what is the importance of engineering materials. Now, let us try to see that what are the factors that will govern the selection of materials. Now, material attributes are very very important and how they are important because they will define the function, the process which is going to be used for making the product as well as the shape of the product. So, the need of material selection is important because it will further lead to the decisions related to the functionality of the product, the process that is going to be used for making the product as well as the shape that can be given to the product. Now, if, the if you remember in our first week of discussion, we talked about the basics of manufacturing processes and shape was an important criteria there. So, different processes can make different types of shapes. Similarly, we can say different materials can take different types of shape. There can be materials which are which we may not be able to give a very very complicated shape even with the most advanced manufacturing process. So, shape, functionality, the process that is going to be used are definitely going to be dependent upon the material attributes. So, we need to have a basic understanding about the engineering materials. We have already discussed if you remember the classification of engineering materials and then we have taken the basic characteristics of the different materials. But we have 20 hours of discussion with us. So, we are going to discuss 2 and a half hours on engineering materials which I believe is not a adequate time to properly understand the concept of materials. But why we have included it is that as a product designer, every designer must have a basic idea about the materials. Because if that basic idea is missing, the design that the designer proposes may be sent back from the manufacturing department. Why? Because it may not be feasible to produce that product as per the material suggested by the designer or as per the manufacturing process suggested by the designer. And therefore, in order to avoid that iteration or to avoid that review of the design or to avoid that reworking of that design, it is better that we have fundamental understanding of the materials as well as the processes before passing on the final design to for manufacturing or to the manufacturing team. And in these days, such situations are rare. Why? Because the product development team has experts from manufacturing also, from marketing also, from legal cell also, from copyright protection or IPR uh, related lawyers also are in the product development team. So, therefore, all these things are taken care of. But when a designer is sitting and he is conceptualizing an idea, he must have basic understanding of the materials, the processes and therefore, this there is an importance to study this course. So, these material attributes are going to affect the functionality, the process as well as the shape that we can give to our product. Now, what is the challenge in selection? We have understood now completely that engineering materials play a pivotal role in the product design process. Now, there is a wide variety of materials available with us. It is given in the very first sentence on this slide. The ever increasing variety of materials are now available, each having its own. Now, each material, if you see a variety, what is the variety? If we talk of variety, we have, if you remember, metals, alloys, polymers, ceramics, composites and a lot of other families of materials. So, we see just 5 
families here but there are other families as well so we can see that we have a large variety and out of this variety we have to choose that which one is going to be the material of choice for my product design whether i am going to make it in plastic or i am to propose this product design in metal or i am going to propose this product design in a ceramic now that will depend upon the characteristics of the materials that will depend upon the applications that are possible with that material and these application and advantages will depend upon the properties of the material which we have already covered if i ask you just i may give you 10 seconds to just remember what are the various properties of engineering materials we have already taken one lecture of half an hour on that which was not a very exhaustive lecture but still we were able to understand that what are the important properties of engineering materials and we have seen that there are physical properties chemical properties as well as we have seen physical chemical mechanical properties thermal properties so all those properties will define the applications with those will define the advantages and limitations of the materials so each of these materials will have their characteristic applications advantages and limitations now we have to see that which one out of this we must choose for our product design suppose we say that we are going to use a polymer so it is going to be a plastic product that i am going to make so how to choose this process or how to choose the material so we have a long list we have to choose one we have taken the decision this answer we have to our problem but how to choose that is one important point that we must all understand as product designers so therefore we need to select the optimal material now this optimality is a big question mark we have to select the optimal material according to the design so this is one guiding factor here we have to see the design and second thing we have to see the in service requirements so first thing is we have to focus on our design as i have already told you in the very beginning in today's session where we have taken that we have a design so we have to choose from a set of materials which are already available x and y but if we want to do modifications in our product design if we have a new materials or a list of new materials available we have more choice in terms of changing the shape or changing the functionality of our product but if there is a limited set of materials available we will be limited in our design thinking approach so that is an important point that has to be kept in mind so that is what uh, is a uh, governing factor here that we have to choose the optimal material but that will define uh, that will depend of oh, sorry on design as well as it will depend on the in service requirements now in service requirements can be that the it is going to be used for under water application one important in service requirement or it has to be always used in sunlight only or it has to be used for aerospace application so the in service requirements in aerospace applications will be different as compared to a ground surface application so depending upon the in service requirement we have to choose our material so the design and in service requirements are the guiding factors for selecting a material for any application now this selection will depend upon now we have seen that there is a challenge of selection there is a large variety of materials available we have to choose from among those materials now how to choose we will choose based on the design as well as the in service requirements now how or what are the quantifiable parameters that we will use for selecting the material we can look at the mechanical properties they are usually quantified we have hardness there are scales in which hardness is measured we have strength we can measure the tensile strength using the universal testing machine utm and find out the strength of a material now that data sheets are already available and if you refer back to our discussion in the properties of engineering material 
towards the end one data table was given given in which all the mechanical and physical properties of the different metals and alloys were depicted so those type of tables are available in which we have the quantified properties means the values of the various properties like for steel or a particular type of steel what is going to be the strength specifically the tensile strength or the compressive strength or the shear strength all those values are already available so when i am designing the product i will do the analysis of the product and find out that how much must be the strength of the material that i must propose for this type of a product design and for that i can refer back to the data book and find out that which are the materials which have the strength more than or better than the strength that is required for my product so i will definitely select the material which is having better strength so similarly hardness also and these are not the only two properties we may also depending upon the application we may also like to look at the toughness properties of the material in many cases we may be interested in the modulus of the material that we are going to propose for our product design so the mechanical properties play an important role and these are quantifiable values and these are maybe mathematical values which will help us to select a material for a particular application some materials will automatically get screened out based on the mechanical properties because the kind of strength the kind of hardness the kind of toughness that we require sometimes the kind of creep properties that we require may not be satisfied with a specific set of materials so those materials will automatically get screened out we will be le left with a certain set of materials which satisfy the properties as per our product design so that is can be one guiding parameter for shortlisting or screening the materials for our product design the second can be the physical properties so physical properties like density melting point boiling point all these properties will help us to screen out some of the materials we will select the best materials which suit to our product design as well as the application for which the product is being designed so the physical properties will also help us select the material and if you remember just today's session only we have seen the material attributes they influence the shape they influence the functionality they influence the process so physical properties may also help us to select or define that which process we can choose for making our product design so basically once we select a material it is a maybe a circular a cyclic process we will we may first like to decide on the material and then look for the manufacturing process or sometimes we may have to change our design because of the manufacturing facilities that we have so if suppose i can propose a product design in plastic but we may not be having the machine which will be able to process the plastic so therefore we may also be limited sometimes with the manufacturing facilities that the company has so therefore physical properties will also help us to select the materials accordingly similarly the chemical properties such as corrosion toxicity another one can be oxidation so all these properties will definitely help us to select the material then the manufacturing properties such as machinability we will see there can be other prop manufacturing properties also like castability weldability formability so that will help us to select the materials cost and availability service life recycling and waste disposal all these are also important parameters which have gained significant relevance in today's scenario now waste disposal as all of you know is a very very important parameter these days and there is a talk about sustainability green environment green products green processes so therefore we must select materials which are healthy which are we can say environment friendly which are easy to dispose of which we can dispose of into the environment without causing any harm to the environment so this waste disposal recycling are these days playing the most important role in choice of materials that we are going to make for our product design so if our product can be made 
or must be made with materials which are recyclable materials which are easy to dispose or materials for which the waste disposal is not going to affect the environment similarly the cost and availability is an important criteria even sometimes the material is not available so we may be forced to select a material which is having high, high cost or is expensive so these are all the governing parameters governing we can say criteria which will help the designer to select a material for the product design so let us see now uh, summary of these and then quickly we will have a round of uh, criteria or maybe a listing down of uh, important parameters related to material selection so we can see here properties play a important role physical mechanical thermal and chemical as is clear on the screen then the manufacturing consideration in the last slide only we have written machinability we can also talk of castability formability machinability coatability whether heat treatment is possible weldability failure and repairability similarly already also it was mentioned cost analysis availability of the materials what is the life of the material what type of maintenance is required for the material especially for underwater applications frequent painting of the surface of material may be required so we can choose a engineering material which does not require frequent painting or maintenance requirement for the material may be less so for specific applications like underwater we may choose material which do not require much maintenance and the last part was environmental issues i already addressed related to the waste disposal i already addressed related to the recycling so we have to see that the materials like ergonomic and safety must be ensured similarly recycling and waste disposal also play a very important role in defining the choice or in defining the material that we are going to use for making our product so i think uh, with the time constraint of 30 minutes for each session i will conclude the today's session here and in the next session quickly we will have quick review of all these properties and then we will try to carry forward our discussion related to a step by step or a systematic process for selecting a engineering material with the help of a case study we will try to understand so today's conclusion is that we have tried to find out the importance of selection of materials we have tried to revise that what are the various types of engineering materials we have tried to list out a criteria which will help us to select a engineering material for a particular product design and finally we have tried to classify the factors that influence the material selection in this slide so a summary of all these four parameters we will have in the beginning of the next session thank you